let's talk about the Detroit Lions here for a little bit. Look, of course, the draft just a few short days away in Detroit, of all places. Very exciting time seeing what Lions general manager and their entire front office, Brad Holmes, what they're going to be doing there to give this Lions team an even better opportunity to go to a Super Bowl and finally win one. And it looks like the Lions have been handed a golden opportun opportunity here to potentially make a huge trade to improve their situation. We've got an article to highlight kind of the under the radar workings of how that could potentially come into be. Let's get into this report and then we'll talk about it more in detail on the, on the other side. This is from side a lion report. There stands to be some teams who will look to move into the late first round rooted in giving a coveted fifth year option on a player, a quarterback. All right. For anyone who isn't familiar, just to jump in here real quick, it's only first round draft picks. that get a fifth year option on a rookie deal second round, third round, and so on draft picks, they only can be signed to four-year deals. So that's why first round picks can sometimes be very coveted. Sitting at number 29 overall, the Lions could be fielding a lot of calls late next Thursday night. The Commanders and Cardinals being mentioned specifically by NFL.com reporter Lance Erline is interesting on the draft trade front for the Lions. Dave Sears is the Cardinals' assistant general manager. Before that, he was the Lions' director of college scouting from 2019 through 2022. During last year's draft, coincidentally or not, after Sears was hired in Arizona, the Lions and Cardinals made two trades. That's interesting. Lance Newmark spent 26 seasons in the player personnel department for the Lions before the commanders hired him to be their assistant general manager this offseason. Most interestingly, on the Washington angle, they have five picks between number 36 and number 100 overall. On at least one draft pick value chart, the Rich Hill version, picks 36 and 100 are equal to pick 29. So there's obviously familiar, familiarity there with Washington, and Washington literally has assets that line up directly with the Lions number 29 pick. I think this is very interesting. I think it's setting up a great opportunity for Holmes and the Lions to make a big-time trade. Myas, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this and what the Lions could be planning here. But first, Detroit fans in the comments section below, a lot of positive energy, a lot of great vibes to Detroit right now. But we're going to flip the switch a little bit because we're talking about the draft. Give us the most memorable draft bust in Lions history. There's been a lot of them. But, but here's one caveat. No quarterbacks, right? We're going to remove all quarterbacks from the discussion. So give us the biggest draft bust in Lions history, removing all quarterbacks from the discussion. Put it in the comment section below. But all right, Myas, what are your thoughts on this move for the Detroit Lions? Potential move, I should say, and just everything going on here as we get ready for the draft. Well, Nick, I, I think there's the problem of being a good team. Making it far into the playoffs puts you in a situation where Obviously, you have a pretty strong roster if you make it the hit the NFC Championship game. There's not a whole lot of holes. You most likely have the quarterback position filled out in the case of the Lions. They do. And you have a lot of other really strong positions. Now, you put yourself in the situation where 29 isn't really that different from you than drafting in the mid-30s. You probably get the same quality of player around there. You're probably either you know, reaching to get, you know, a skill position player or getting one of the better, you know, uh, undervalued players. You think tight ends, you think safeties, you think interior offensive line can go in those rounds, maybe a running back of some sort. But I think this just screams like a great move for the Lions to go after because for other teams, like you said, who don't have the quarterback position nailed down, who really are trying to reach and use this pick so like you said, get that extra year of a rookie deal that has been so coveted by teams rebuilding, have a you know young quarterback, rookie deal, have five years of that versus having four is going to make a big, big difference. I think the Lions are going to be able to get a lot out of that pick. And if they trade down into the mid-30s, I don't think they're really losing too much value in that aspect of things. So I think this just shows the Lions and, you know, the general consensus, they have their heads on straight. You know, Holmes, he knows what he's doing. I know Detroit fans, the draft is in Detroit. You want to see the Lions make that pick day one, but you have to be honest with yourself. Wouldn't you be upset with your GM if they didn't do what was best for the team, regardless of where the draft is from? It doesn't really matter. I would much rather see a Super Bowl be won off of a smart move that you make in the later round of the first round, then see your team go up on stage in the first round of the draft just because it's in your city. So I think the Lions are thinking with their heads here, especially because earlier, you know, Holmes says, I'd, 
ask for uh, forgiveness rather than the permission to trade out of the first round. I don't really care about stuff like that. I want to do what's best for the team. So I think this is a really great move for the Lions, and I think they're in a unique situation to have the ability to do so and have really lost no value. Yeah, and, and at this point, I'm going to sit here at this point. I think it's going to happen. I think it's just a matter of who they trade with. And if you look at the situation where the Lions are in, their one disappointing uh, fact right now is that they only have uh, three picks in the top 150. And this is a draft that's known for being uh, very, very deep, but only through the top 150. After that, it's just a bunch of nobodies, right? Just because the NIL and changes to the college landscape. And it's known to be really top heavy in the top 20 or so players of the draft. The Lions picking at 29. They're obviously not going to get any of those guys. So the Lions are in a tough situation. They want to acquire more assets in the top 150. And what better way to do that than to trade out of their pick with a team like Washington or Arizona, who's going into the first round, maybe a team like Arizona, you know, maybe they're going to pick up another offensive lineman or a great defensive player. Maybe Washington, if they got their quarterback in the first round, they get their wide receiver and the trading back up into the first round to get them with the Lions, right? Again, there's a lot of opportunities there for the Lions to take advantage of this and add a lot of draft capital because we're hearing across the board that after pick 150, through pick 150, very deep, very quality class. After that, steep drop off. So the Lions need a lot of assets to meet that demand, meet that situation. This is actually what Steve Sarek said about the draft. He said, clubs are saying that this is a really good draft through 150 picks. And then after that, it falls off a cliff, right? So right now, the Lions and Holmes, I guarantee you, they're looking at their situation and say, listen, we're not in an ideal position to take advantage of this draft right now. We need more picks in the top 130, top 150. The only way we can get that is by trading back. And I think that's exactly what's being pitched here by the Lions. I think it's going to happen. They have the connections to do it. There's a lot of trends we're seeing with these reports in terms of the Washington, Arizona, maybe some other teams moving up into the first round. And again, I think it's just a matter of when, not if, that the Lions trade back. And as much as Detroit fans want to see them pick a player in the first round, I think the smart move is to trade back, and I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, even your relatives. It's all out there. That's why we use Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows us which data brokers are selling our information and automatically submits opt-out requests for us. Cleaning up our information not only reduces the amount of that stupid spam we all get, but it also protects us from hackers who could use this information to help them access our social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. Aura also does much more to protect us and our families from online threats. We also get features like antivirus protection, VPNs, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more without having to download several different apps. That's really key. One location, get all this great stuff. It's really easy to set up. And the best of all, we get everything at one affordable price. And you may already have one or two of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on doing the hard work to keep you safe so you can focus on other tasks and have peace of mind. We value our privacy and we value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Saturday to start your two-week free trial. Also, link below in the description. Again, Aura.com slash Saturday for your free two-week trial.